Hello and welcome to Water Cooler, episode number 249, also known as 69 plus 69 plus 69 plus 42. Thank you so much for tuning in to this show. My name's Chris Loxamana, and this is the show where I hang out with my Corolla Digital Buds, drink some brews, kick it Philly style. Sometimes we'll also drink some... With me today, Kalen Beans here. What's going on? Hey, Kalen. Gary Smith's here. What's up? What's up? Nothing can stop the... Matt Fondelier's here. Hey, brother. Watch yourself, it's the call. <laughs> and Mike Dawson. The place to be is here. The time to be is now. Yes. Did you get the Toy Story claw drop? No, I didn't. Oh. What, have you been busy or something? No, I did get this drop, though. I, don't, I haven't listened to it yet. We got the puss. How do you guys feel about eating puss? You guys like it? <laughs> <laughs> I have that one. <laughs> that was sent to me from... Uh, I have a... I have a guy who just pulls drops for me now. His name's Casey Peters. Yeah, and, seriously. And really, he only pulls Matt it's drops. So far, he's, only been drops of me. He's very interested in you. He says this one's his favorite of the three. He's oh, he pull- sent me four. To be fair, he's pulled some Chris drops. I've just felt awkward giving them to you because I don't think you'll play them. <laughs> so that was the full one, but then he also sent me three other versions of that one. So let's hear him. Jesus. We had the puss. Okay. How do you guys feel about eating puss? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And lastly... How do you guys feel about eating puss? You guys like it? <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I like them all. I think my delivery is really what sold it. <laughs> yeah, it's very. It's very yeah. We got to do clam chatter again and That's have a virtual mat. Yeah. Well, you guys know how I feel about clams, right? I'm in. Yeah. Sup, fuckers? <laughs> no. <laughs> But love me some clam. He does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Kalen likes it when I f up the drop. I couldn't even really hear. I didn't hear any of those drops uh, you were playing except that last one. <laughs> oh yeah, Kalen doesn't have headphones. And he's just, uh, he's just nodding along. Oh, um, Kalen. Yeah, and also now take Gary is in frame today for those watching on YouTube. Gary is in frame. Uh, I just got back from Nashville this morning. I'm Did you shit your pants? <laughs> yes. yes. My second note, didn't shit my pants. <laughs> Woo! I knew okay. that would be a... I got to fall up. Yes. It's weird that, that shitting my pants, it's not only, oh, if I ate something similar to what I ate, but also if, I've, if I'm in the same location. Yeah, it's geographic specific. It's ge- yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, I guess it is. So I would like to let everybody know that he didn't shit my pants. I really didn't think that. I that bet story... Jay Shetty would really agree with that. Yeah, he yeah. would. Uh-huh. He's, yeah, he's very full, very heady about it too, and uh, his last name appropriately uh, would make him agree. I didn't think that that story would really last as long as it has, and every day I regret it just a little <laughs> bit more <laughs> that I, that I told you. <laughs> it's the shit that keeps on giving. Yeah, it really is. And you know what else is the shit that keeps on giving? Well, we got a couple things. First off, the new Facebook group. Yeah. What's happening over there on Facebook? It's it's hot. It's fire right now. Everybody who's coming into that Facebook group, it is blowing up. Facebook.com slash group slash Bobo Boy Army Worldwide LLC. (laughs) Easy to find. (laughs) No problem. Everybody, check out that website. And you got to sign in. Or you you have to ask to be requested. It's a private. It's a private. Very exclusive. It's a club. It's a club. Uh, Look. I want everybody in it, though. It's a club I want everybody in. But yeah. you can't just get in. There are barriers to entry. You guys seen Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade? Oh, of course. You guys remember that? He's got like four or five different tests to pass. Right. It's kind of like that. Yeah. It's kind of like that. You guys there's ever- just a password. And this week, it's Gary, Matt, and I. <laughs> yeah. You guys ever see uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to put together that monkey statue. Stuff. Just like that. Mm-hmm. We got three questions. Two questions <laughs> that you have to answer. Uh, what are they, Gary? We, I won't give away the answers because, look, we want actual listeners, sure. Yeah. The The questions are, what kind of frat was Gary in? Nice. And what is Kalen's alter ego called? Beautiful. Yeah, now, standard. Solid. now, here's yeah. the thing. It, the answers have to be reviewed by a person. So if you don't know the answers, you can just type in some other stuff you know about the show. Maybe we'll let you in. Yeah, Ga- yeah Gary is our gatekeeper. And look, I what, either get the answers right or impress Gary is all is all I'm asking. All right, when when you're trying to get in this group, because I would love to see you there. And I have some posts here that I just want to read because I love I love perusing through. First off, an update from Alfalfa T Sprout. He named his puppy Boone. Remember, he was asking oh, yeah. the Bobo Boys. Yeah, yeah. Names. <laughs> 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 puppy Boom. We are, we are all pro <laughs> puppy. Uh, Stella says I get confused every time Chris calls Dawson Mike. Mm. Which uh, you're not alone, Stella. Everybody else. 
in this room. I believe I loved that post, which is not <laughs> something I often do. Yeah. Karen Graham says, hey, from Scotland. Arf, arf. Hey, we have a, a listener from Scotland wow. in the Bobo Boy Army Facebook group. Worldwide LLC. Worldwide, yes. Uh, let's see here. Heather Hoyt writes, OMG, Matt Fondelier, I just had a Matt and Beck sighting. I feel like I just saw a celebrity. And the way she spelled it was M-A-T-N-B-E-K, which is a license plate. That's right. Of one of your parents. Now, this person's either stalking my mom or she lives <laughs> in my hometown. I don't know. How cool is that, Pretty though? great. That car's still driving around. Do you guys ever want this, like, uh, when you meet somebody and they look through old photos and just thought, how cool would it be if I was just in the background as a kid in one of your old photos? Do yeah. you think about that every once in a while? No, but no. I mean, no. I, I, I like think about that all the time. Life. That didn't even make sense to me. <laughs> like, if Does you're anyone know what Chris is saying? No. If you look at a picture of you, you had... have to bump it to a stranger and have them say, is this you in the back of this picture? No, no, no. What I'm saying is if like, people we know, like, if Gary was looking through an I think it would be cool if Gary was looking through pictures of him when he was like at Disneyland as a kid, and there's me with a lollipop in my stroller uh, in the background next to the toad ride. So a picture from last year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that gets Gary. I was, I was making it way too easy for Pixel Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just mapping it out for him. Here you go, Dave. Speaking of. Oh, we'll get to that. Pixel Fun with an, an all-time. Oh, yeah piece of work here he did now we have a legal representative on the water cooler and in the boba boy army Mm -hmm. and that is gary ghost (laughs) 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 who works pro brono (laughs) for for us if we have any legal questions like if we are if whatever we see in the patreon it's okay yeah whatever happens in the facebook group stays there it's stuff like that and uh because we got hebroist corpus on that one (laughs) that's right that's right so pixel fun may or I don't know. He made it or he found an actual picture of it. I don't know because it looks so good of a Gary Ghost billboard yeah. with him working pro brono. Is the phone number mm-hmm. is, of course, uh, area code 696. That's six actually nine in six. Silver <laughs> Yeah. It's up there, over there. Yeah, and the phone number is 696-9696. Not it's on Alvarado. Not, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's, be- it's beautifully done. Alvarado. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, make sure to check out Pixel Fun. He is our... Our uh, our artist for the Boba Boy Army historian, <laughs> yeah, historian, yeah, yeah. Th- these are the pictures that are they're going to be left once right. we're long That's gone. Right. And I'm happy that that he's doing that. So thank you, Pixel Fun. Um, Renee Hughes wrote scrambled eggs. What do you put in it? What's your cooking method? We all know mine. It's been it's there's been a lot. We of have talked about eggs. There was a chef on delay about eggs. How ridiculous mm-hmm. yours is. And how ri- <laughs> it is not ridiculous. My, I always said uh, you could toss a splash of water in your eggs. That's right. No. That's only if you're no. feeding a uh, hundred <laughs> fucking people at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> That's the only fucking reason in the world for putting water. It's in not eggs. absurd at you know, all. I'm going to be honest, Chris. After you brought that up, I made scrambled eggs for myself. Put a shot of water in there. <laughs> Did absolutely nothing. <laughs> it was completely useless. I, I don't think it really does. I don't know what it what it does, but I saw it, it on, waters the egg down. <laughs> waters the eggs down. I think I saw it on, in, on the Food Network because the water evaporates. Hey, it Chris, just, it adds you oxygen. didn't see it on the Food Network. <laughs> I did. No, you didn't. I absolutely did. Mm. I used to it was watch a, the food a segment Network. called "Don't Do This." Yeah, it, is that show worst cooks in America? Right. I used to watch the Food Network all the time. I still and, do. Yeah, I love that show. It was the one time Gordon Ramsay punched a guy in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, uh, because I, I love myself some Gordon Ramsay on la- TV. And last, lastly, Robert Williams in the Facebook group wrote, "Best ending to a show." I love how everyone had to leave in order for Chris to get that plug in. Woof woof. And uh, <laughs> that yeah. was all time, dude. I had. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad we edit nothing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, yeah. I left. People it all wonder in. if we actually do or don't edit anything. There's I think that right, right there, there is fucking yeah. proof. <laughs> <laughs> It was too funny. In other news, we've lost our sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> Are you uh, hiring? Well, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> there, now a, a little bit more business to take care of. First off, uh, listener Kathy did something very nice, and she's buying us all lunch next week. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I wanted to just say uh, uh, to uh, Kathy, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, Plans are already being made, Kathy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. We're on this. Yeah. The arrangements are being, are being made. And lastly, in the Patreon episode. I don't think it's fair that you guys are all in on this lunch thing and you're getting excited and I don't know what it is yet. Come on. Oh, she just gave us money for lunch. Oh, we'd go in Italian deli? 
No. Ooh. We got to discuss it. What Pasadena, should we do? We can send the kid. The kid. Interesting. The, uh, Pasadena. Sunny I thought it was in drive. Long Beach. Well, Long Beach is too far. There's another one in Pasadena that'll just be quicker, and then they don't have to travel right. that far. I like. It. Either way, she just said, "Hey, I want to give you guys money, um, so can, you guys can have something better than a, a small Mac salad." Yeah, she wanted to make sure we all got a full size Mac salad. <laughs> so that was very, very generous. So thank you, Kathy. <laughs> and speaking of food, we also got some food sent in. So on the Patreon episode, I know the listeners here who have, who don't subscribe to Patreon, I suggest you do. It's very easy. Patreon.com slash water cooler. It's very clean. It's twice the amount of show that twice, you would normally yeah, get. You're and it. I got a great shit I did as a kid today that has to deal with fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, yeah, Dawson, Dawson shares his pyrotechnic <clears throat> stories. It's a wonderful <clears throat> thing. And this is certainly it would classify as pyrotechnics. <laughs> Matt uh, shared some a dream of his that he, he never got... Got to see. Yeah, so dream. on the Patreon episode, uh, I was talking about a trip to Europe that I took, and we were all kind of chiming in a little bit with some European stories. But when I was in Oslo in Norway, the place I was staying had a restaurant that served reindeer. And my friend that I was traveling with was a little on the cheap side, and we did not end up going to that restaurant. And so I said one of my biggest life regrets was that I never – got to try reindeer <laughs> not one of i believe that was your <laughs> yeah. biggest life well, maybe it's some matt's, hyperbole there but you never know matt, matt's biggest life regret was never to try reindeer and and then we talked about it and we joked and then we thought how would we want matt to have reindeer we said if anybody knows how matt can get reindeer let us know and we thought if matt's gonna eat reindeer he should be doing it Dress as Santa Claus. No, I don't love that idea, but you guys all <laughs> seem to think that had happened. That is well, strong. You know, it's really it's strong. Yeah. You know what idea I do love? I can't remember if it was our Facebook group or the Patreon. It's a Patreon. It was a Patreon that somebody chimed in and said, well, if Matt's going to eat reindeer dressed as Santa, Chris has to be dressed as an elf. Which I'm totally and fine with. That's, that's that was uh, That was listener Jordan Anderson on Patreon said that. So, so yeah, and I think, why don't we make this a whole scene? We got the Christmas music playing. My wife also wants my dog dressed in some sort of Christmas costume, okay. also being in the picture. Matt's dog, Taka, will be in the picture or video, whatever it is. Whatever it is. We, we, all, we all put little antlers on them. <coughs> yeah. We could all do it. But we all get into the Christmas spirit. We all dress up. Well, let's let's get to the main the main idea here, which is we talked about how I'd like to eat reindeer once in my life. And <laughs> a package was sent to the studio that I received two days ago. That uh, says woof woof from Joe and Sarah Cool. And inside of this box <laughs> is reindeer jerky. Wow. Uh, canned reindeer. That looks like an oversized gravy. That one tuna rough. can. And also I a uh, hot and spicy reindeer summer sausage. Nice. Great. And uh, you guys don't know this, but they also sent me a. Uh, Real value Santa beard and wig set. So that's also <laughs> currently sitting in my office. <laughs> so we're a couple steps closer to making this dream a reality. <laughs> but here's the deal. You gotta sign up for Patreon if you wanna uh if you wanna see it. That's and maybe beautiful. uh maybe as we get a little closer to Christmas, maybe we'll uh we'll make a deal out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that Matt wants to wait until we get closer to Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> well when else are you supposed to eat reindeer? It's seasonal. If I wanted a pumpkin spice latte in, in May. I would be shunned. Wait, reindeer, you're supposed to eat but that around Christmas? <laughs> I don't think that's I mean, that seasonal. Reindeer is not a mythical animal. They're around all year long. You just associate them with with Christmas. Well, should, if you're in Alaska, you got to do your say, hunting in the, uh, in, the, in the daytime months. All of this is yeah, from Alaska. So it will Alaska. be jerky by the time you eat it Wait, what's a in daytime December. month? Oh, the months where the sun's shining. But don't right. you get like 500 pounds and you should eat it all year long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying by... When you eat it in December, it's certainly jerky. I'm just saying, if I'm going to dress up like Santa Claus and you guys are going to dress up like fucking elves and we're going to eat reindeer, maybe we should do it around Christmas time. Yeah. I mean, I could be swayed into having it sooner. I, I want to eat I stale think Halloween, bro. reindeer meat. Well, Halloween, Halloween time, I guess that's not bad either. I don't care when it is. We could all is. still dress up. I yeah, just care. that's true. I just care that it happens. I, I would I'm love to be in a photo happened. with all of you guys just dressed up. It could be our Christmas card. We should. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> oh, man. And yeah, we could, and we get in the spirit. And while Matt is uh, finally gets to live his dream of yes. eating his lifelong dream of eating reindeer, we should go to the big conference table at the other shop and sit around it like we're all all in our Santa gear, 
and then have the spread of all the reindeer shit out. There was definitely enough jerky for everybody, and I'm just going to say right now, I will not be hogging the canned reindeer, <laughs> so I'm sure there'll be plenty to go around. I'll bring my spoon. There it you go. It be hot spoon food if we oh, heat it up. Heat it up. Oh. That, uh, that makes me want to vomit, just thinking, just <laughs> thinking about reindeer in gravy in a can. <laughs> it's it not, I'm not yeah. excited about that at all, well, but I'll try it. <laughs> it's uh, it's an it. experience. That's what Chez yeah. Fondelay is all about. It's about food experiences. You know what I'm saying, people? Right. How bad could it be? Right. It's got to be better than the puss. <laughs> we got the puss. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, um, so as I said, I just got back from Nashville. Had a weird hotel situation. We talked a little bit about it on the Corolla show where uh, Nissan paid for three rooms for me, Adam Corolla, and Matt D'Andrea. We didn't know that. And uh, – we get there, and Adam gets his room, and now it's me and Matt, and they give us one room. And Matt's like, oh, we're sharing. I'm like, fine. No problem. I do not mind sharing. Not a big deal. Uh, we've, we've shared rooms plenty of times in the past. So we go up to the room, and we walk in, king bed. I'm like, all right. I'm putting my stuff. I'm trying to unpack. Like, all right, whatever. I don't care. We've done this before. I, yeah. And he says, uh, look, we should just see if we get two twins. It's fine. I'm like, okay. So I call downstairs. And uh, and the girl, it, it's this is like one a.m. now, and and it's just one person working the front. This this one girl, and she picks up and she goes, uh, "Hi, Matt." She thinks I'm Matt, and I go, "Uh, yeah, is there a way I, I, we can get two twin beds instead of this one king?" All right, let me see what I could do. Call you back. Wait a couple minutes. Calls us back. Yeah, I could get you that, but you have to come down here because I'm the only one here. So you, I need you to come down here, pick up the keys. Exchange them and get you the room. Fine. So I run down, do it. We go back up, same floor. It's the 20th floor. We go into the room, two twin beds. Great. Now we really unpack. It's getting late. It's it's already late. Matt is a Matt's a chocoholic. I don't know if you guys have have, has, have known this. Matt DeAndre know loves he eats chocolate every time I see him. And even here, he's the one that eats all the cookies. <laughs> Those chocolate chip cookies. That's Matt. Oh. And uh, he loves his chocolate. And he had a. a Tub of chocolate. He's sharing. We're, we're in there. We're sharing chocolate. We get <laughs> sharing chocolate in a king chocolate. size bed. We didn't eat. Di- we didn't. Love. We didn't yeah. eat dinner. And uh, he shares chocolate. And then he has like a meat stick. I, I, eat, I eat a meat stick too. And oh. then, and then. Uh, so you guys were in separate beds while you were eating his meat stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't. We, we ate the meat stick and then we went to bed. And then, so we get under That's the covers. Usually how we do it too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ruin this. <laughs> no. You're the one talking. We uh, we get under the covers, and now I'm looking at my emails with Nissan, trying to figure out what's just playing the show in my head of what we're going to do with them tomorrow because I'm producing a, a live podcast there. And I look at the confirmation, and Matt and I have two different confirmation numbers. And so I, I ask Matt, did you know that? And he goes, no. And I show him my phone. He goes, we should check on that because, um, yeah, we might have two different rooms. So I call down. That lady answers again. Hi, Matt. Hi. Is there another room under my name? Yeah. (laughs) Oh. Okay. Can I have it? (laughs) What the fuck is wrong with that person? Yeah, okay, sure. Come on down. Like, like, as if I would have known and she she knew the whole time, didn't want to say anything. It's the claw. So now I pack up all my stuff, like my toiletry bag, all my clothes. I I throw my clothes in the drawer because... Um, I was using my carry-on as my gear. I had more gear than clothes, so I was using that to hold on my gear. And then uh, and Matt I, was passed out, chocolate melted yeah. all over oh, his yeah. face. Matt was, uh, you Matt, better go. Matt was really bobbed. So I was like, I'll take the, I'll take the new room. It's fine. And uh, so I go downstairs, uh, get the key to the new place, 20th floor again, get back up, get uh, get to the room. And I said, now I'm like kind of awake. And I thought, okay, well. Let me read a few more emails. So I'm trying to log on to their Wi-Fi, and it's not working. It's You have to enter your last name and the room number. So I pick up the phone again. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I dial it. And you know, now it's one of these, <sighs> hi, Chris. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I'm having trouble logging on to the uh, Wi-Fi here. And she goes, well, you have to type Clifton and then put your last – or and put your room number. And I go – well, I've never met this Nissan guy before who booked the room, so I didn't know that. So I was like, okay, oh, there it goes. It works now. Thank you. No problem. And oh, then, my God. And then uh, so I'm like, okay, she hates me. The front desk lady hates me. I don't even know what I did. but Yeah, she you did me. nothing I'm, wrong. I'm inconveniencing her. 
And then so next morning I wake up and uh, we're also doing a live podcast from the hotel, my hotel room. So so I'm keeping that in mind too. Like I got to produce a podcast in my room. I wake up to all this construction noise right across the street. They're building a building that is – it's so loud. Jackhammers, uh, backup beepers, <clears throat> everything. And I'm just like, Adam will lose his mind if he has to do a podcast in, in the sound bath of noise. So I'm like, all right, it's it's already 8:30. I bet I bet she's gone. And I and I call and she goes, hi Chris, but it's a different it's a different voice, a different tone. I'm like, okay, hi, I'm just looking to change rooms. Uh, no problem. Why don't you just head down here and uh and we'll we'll get you a room that's on the opposite end. I got you a corner room. Is that okay? It's a little bit smaller. And it's not as nice, but it's away from the noise. Yeah, that's fine. And then I'm like, was that her? Like, I don't know if it was her or not. Cause she, and I go down. It was totally her. <laughs> so here we are again. And I'm switching keys with her again. And I'm losing my mind because I hate being a hassle. And I'm being such a hassle. A hassle. That's, what, that's when you're a hassle and being an asshole. Well done. And, and, and now it's just uncomfortable. The entire time, because she's there. She's there the night after. I see her. I know she hates me. It's the way probably Adam felt when he sees like stewardesses, <laughs> like mm-hmm. like, uh, like the ones we we saw again today. Um, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. yeah, he doesn't feel that way. I don't but. think Adam feels that way, but yeah. I understand why you do. But I don't think you were being a asshole because yeah. I don't think the asshole part is true. You were. Yeah, there are a few things that she yeah, fucked up. <laughs> These are legitimate requests. Yeah, yeah. they're legitimate requests. Yeah, There's a few things there. The first two steps, I think, were her fuck up. And yeah, just exactly. because you're the overnight person doesn't mean you get to fucking sleep on the job. Right. You yeah. got a job. You're there for a fucking reason. Well, now we're going to a Nissan event. Matt and uh, Adam left early because we both got rental cars. I'm on rental car. And they left early. So I'm sending Doss in the show that we recorded and I'm doing some work. And then I'm about to head over. But I have to. I, where's my shirt? I can find my shirt. Oh, I left it in the other room. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I pick up the phone. <laughs> I need my shirt. Oh, man. Now I feel you. Now I feel you. And I'm, oh, I'm hurting wow. so bad. I'm hurting so bad. Do you know this girl's name that was at the front wow. desk? Are you well, on a first name basis with her at this point? Katie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Katie. It's me Hi, again. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Pick up the phone. Uh, yeah, I left a shirt in my uh, last room. What room was it? And I didn't even remember. Because I've been switching so much. This is my That's fourth her, room. I'm in know. my fourth room. What room was it? I, I think it was this. And she's like, oh, I found it. It's this. Okay, we'll check. She goes. Someone knocks me her. Here, here's the shirt. Oh, they found it. Great. It was in the closet hanging. And then uh, awesome. And then now uh, we go to the show. Everything's everything's great. I'm packing up. And I'm missing a microphone. <laughs> And now I'm just like, should I just leave it? Should I just leave this microphone? I don't want just to avoid any sort of confrontation. Of course I didn't because microphones are expensive. Way more expensive than a shirt. (laughs) And we need them. If it was the other way around, would you have left the shirt? Like the microphone first and then the shirt second? No, I love that shirt. (laughs) Um, And and so I call again. Hi, I'm missing a microphone. I was checking to see if uh, it was there. Maybe turn the loss and found uh, no, we don't have it. Okay, I'll I'll check again in the morning. And she's like, okay, I'll keep looking. I'll send somebody up there. I was like, okay, that was very nice. Great. And then right after I hang up, I found the microphone. It was in my bag. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, now at this point you're not as well. Uh, no. Did you just leave at that point? I was just a bandit yeah. chip. Oh, yeah. I was just like, okay, I'm not going to tell her I found it. Yeah. Whatever. I just, just cover my face. I mean, thank goodness we have we have to wear face masks. No. Oh. So at least have some sort of disguise. Or, yeah, it was it was rough. It was it was That's a, bad. And that was the the story of me and the, front, the lady at the front desk, Katie. Katie. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> 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 yeah, Katie. Katie. I that's, know. That's similar to the story I had on the last cruise, where I was sent up to an unclean room three times before they finally got me into a, mm. a regular room. I I although I did not really feel like the asshole there. I thought. That one was definitely on her, but yeah, I do relate to being the the hassle for that night manager. Yeah. Was, that's a tough I job. almost left the microphone. Well, the hypothetical microphone because I actually had it all the time, but it, it did cross my mind just just lose it, maybe get it mailed over here. I don't know, <laughs> just to avoid it. I hate I hate the confrontation. It's not it's not for me. But uh, other than that, great great trip. Didn't shit my pants. And uh, did you get to have any Nashville food? Uh, well, we went to that steak. Not really. We we woke up. 
Um, and I went to get breakfast. I got this like breakfast coupon. And is it good for continental breakfast? I was expecting like a buffet or something. And it was a sit-down restaurant. I thought you said I went to get my breakfast coupon like you were starting your coup. Does. Yeah. At the buffet. <laughs> <laughs> you got all the Sandinistas to fucking join you and surround the hash browns. <laughs> yeah, get that coupon. <laughs> Let's get that coupon. Um, and, and I sit down and, and, and I say, how much is this good for? She said it's $48. And the most expensive thing is an omelet for $18. It's a weird number. It's a weird – it is a weird number. No alcohol. And it's just me because Adam and Matt aren't even up yet because I have to go to this event first and, and get this thing set up. So I think, okay, well, let's rack it up. So I get the – I got a uh, – the biggest omelet they had with all the – like every meat in it. So and that's it, all you could actually physically put into your stomach. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then uh, – well, and then she's like, "Oh, we'll get low. because she gets added gratuity." So she's she says she gets eighteen percent. I'm like, "All right, let's rack this thing up. What else can I get? We will got sides. You want bacon? Sure. Toast? Yeah. Um, sausage? Yeah. And then we got Some the more coffee meat on top of yeah, the meat dude. that's already. So in far, the- you're just at what I ordered for breakfast: <laughs> <laughs> yeah. omelet, bacon, sausage, and coffee. Yeah, and, and toast. And I'll be honest; I was really surprised because they were small. They were, they weren't. It didn't feel like it was forty worth forty eight dollars. It was just a bigger selection, but it, they weren't huge or anything. I was still hurting afterwards because I ate it all. Yeah, but uh, you couldn't you couldn't take anything to go. Well, not not to the event. I was going I was going straight to an event, and we didn't oh, never stop dancing like, before. I'd be, yeah, I'd be like <laughs> wrap this up real tight. It's yeah. gonna keep in my backpack for at least twelve hours. Yep. Eggs. Oh hell yeah, dude. I, I the reason I disagree is I know a nurse. Because I do that all – I love eating leftovers. Everybody knows. And I'll eat it. I don't care. I, I eat out of the trash. Fine. And then uh, one my, – my friend who's a nurse said that she saw the worst bout of food poisoning she's ever seen where the guy almost died. And what, what it was was eggs. He left eggs in his trunk and still ate it. Cooked eggs? Yeah. For how like long? Leftover eggs. I don't know. And what heat? <laughs> I mean, I you know, you, you got to be smart. Enough. Yeah, but <laughs> the reason why I know answered. the reason why yeah. I know it'll last is because I've done it. and I've never been sick. Yeah, that's very true. So, all right, so one one and one, I guess. One and one. <laughs> gotta, yes. You got to keep it <laughs> covered in your trunk at three fifty, though. Yeah. yeah. And don't don't eat don't eat if they start to sweat. Yeah, probably don't eat sweaty eggs. I think we can all agree on that. Um, so, yeah, I. I I I just uh, I well I ate I ate everything I could and then went to the event super full and still got the forty eight dollars worth of breakfast. Wow! Good yeah. to hear I out. wish I could have used I could have used it on booze. I was I saw like champagne. And yeah, that's mimosas. so lame. What does it matter to them? Yeah, at pretty much every restaurant's like that. If you have any sort of coupon or any sort, of, alcohol's always excluded. I think because they pay because a higher they're price. They're going to make money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's where their margins are. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's a bummer. It's a bummer, but that was my uh, my mini Shea Chris. We do have a Shea Fondelay, which I'm very excited about. I do know the topic, and it's just piqued my curiosity. Mm-hmm. So we'll get to that in a moment. Also, we have a flick in the bean. Yes. Wow. <laughs> like, let's just fucking. That's the first thing he said all day. I think we think we got to go to that first, right? Yeah. That... Yeah. All right. Let's do it. We all want to know what. With that energy. Your opinion's what we need. Yeah. So Kaylin, get on that mic <laughs> yeah. and flick the bean. Oh, Kaylin. It's like the bean. Respect all women. All right, Kaylin. Let's go. Should I go now? Yes, yes. let's go. Chris, you're going to be very excited about this one. Oh, he turned up a bit. Turn, Pretend turn you're on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, please. A, uh, Sports game. This week, an American pickle. I am excited just because I love pickles. Well, but not, not Americans. <laughs> How dare you, Chris? <laughs> wow, Chris. <laughs> she had to choose one of those yeah. two words, and God. he went with pickle. <laughs> I said what I said. That's, oh, I love pickles. That's a fucking patriot right there. <laughs> wow, Chris. <laughs> pickle. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I remember when Chris watched the trailer for this movie. He got very excited for because he loves pickles so much. And then we got back from break i think it was and i every time since then i said i have a, a flick and he goes an american pickle i go no he goes oh. yeah so i figured i'd watch an american pickle and finally review it yeah dawson can't watch it it's on hbo max oh, oh right it is on hbo max that's right and it came out august 7th i was directed by brandon trost who uh i guess directorial debut he's very he's an accomplished cinematographer uh stars seth rogan and seth rogan 
And then uh, Sarah Snook, who plays Shiv on, in Secession. Caitlin's new, yeah. new obsession. Yeah, which is a sh- – I see what you did there. Isn't one of those – wasn't one of the Sess have to be Seth Brogan? What? Nothing. Oh, Seth Brogan. Seth Brogan. Can't have two of the same guy. Uh, it's about a Jewish immigrant who gets preserved in a vat of pickles and wakes up in modern day New York Brogan. 100 years later, yeah. uh, attempting to fit in with his last remaining uh, descendant, who is also played by Seth yeah. Brogan. Wait, Dawson, do you, do you know, have you heard of this movie? I have not. Okay, you got to hear this premise again. Yeah, you, you do. A Jewish immigrant gets preserved in a vat of pickles and wakes up 100 years later in modern day New York. <laughs> What does he smell like? <laughs> Pickles. <laughs> and then he unites with his last remaining descendant, who is also played by Seth Rogen. So it's Seth Rogen as the old Jewish immigrant, mm-hmm. and then Seth Rogen as the modern day dude. But correct me if I'm wrong, he's not necessarily an old Jewish immigrant. They're about the same age. R- yes. Yeah. yeah. In the- yes. He is- they look exactly the same, except one has a beard. Correct. Okay. Uh, it is 89 minutes long, which you all know is just about the perfect time for right, comedy. Right, it's right under the sweet spot. Right, just a minute under. It has a 72% critic Rotten Tomato score and a 47 with the audience. Ooh. Yeah, not great with the audience. Um, yeah, it's a comedy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I guess. It's supposed to be a comedy. You can interchange a- this review with Jokers. Yeah. <laughs> Joker. It would be this, or Joker. Not a comedy. <laughs> uh, I was, I'm not really sure what this movie was at this point. I, I thought it was going to be a lot more of like a Seth Rogen-y type comedy, <laughs> but it kind of turns into a more heartfelt family introspection type movie, but it's still kind of silly. But then tries to be serious again. Yeah. I don't know. Pick it's a very, lane, American it's pickle. Very weird. Pickle lane. Pickle lane. Pickle lane. lane. Oh, I didn't pickle even know I did that. Just pickle quit. lane. Just, you said it, man. I'm just pointing it out. Kalen, you got to write that in your pickle in your lane. review, and then that's what Ron Smales will use. I'll credit you. Kalen Bean says pickle that. lane, <laughs> American pickle. <laughs> This is the kind of quality entertainment we offer on this show. <laughs> I think this is a comedy, but it needs to pickle. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and then under it, another quote that says, I hate Americans, Chris locks them on. <laughs> no! no! <laughs> Very untrue. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... First time watching this, I just got bored and turned it off, honestly. Wow. Yeah. And then I knew I was going to review it, so I had to go back <laughs> and finish. This is not a good sign. It's actually not stopped a lot of reviewers before. <laughs> Looking at you, Pete Hammond of Maxim. <laughs> oh, he'll, ju- he'll just stop watching and I review mean, it? his reviews were always terrible. I don't uh-huh. know. Shots fired. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> at a Come at us, at Pete. a critic from 15 years ago. Everyone bark at Pete. <laughs> Come on and bark at Pete. Uh, Hashtag it, Pickle Lane. Yeah. <laughs> pickle Lane, Pete Hammond. <laughs> pickle Lane. Uh, it's it's a little funny. I'll give it that. You know, he chuckled a couple times. Nice. And Seth Rogen's pretty good in it too. For he does a pretty good Eastern European accent throughout the movie, I guess. Uh, and then, yeah, it's, <laughs> he's fine. The movie's kind of funny, I guess. It, I wish they had focused a little more on the guy who wakes up a hundred years in the future, but they yeah. don't, they more focus on the relationship between. I know. I like the origin story yeah, better. I liked him like, yeah, kind of fish out of water in the new world, which does play into the rest of the movie, but not like enough in a comedic sense for me. I don't know. I wouldn't recommend it. Unflickable. 3.2 out of 10. 3.2? Wow. wow. It's actually been a while since we've had a negative that's review on this show. Yeah. yeah, but look, that's how you know he's honest. Yeah. I agree with Kalen. I was very excited when I saw the trailer. I watched it, and I thought, this doesn't really know where it's going. After, Have you seen it, Gary? No, I have no intention. Oh, okay. I mean, it's such a good premise, though. It was, yeah, I thought it would be a lot better. Yeah. I mean, I knew it was going to be silly, but... Not confusing. Yeah, I still love Seth Rogen. Either way, I yeah, think Seth Rogen. Think he's the best. still hilarious. All right, let's now get into some Shay. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right, we got the puss. <laughs> oh no! What type of foods might we hear of today? What might be the price? What might be the venue? So let's find out. It's time for Gary to say, "Hey, Matt, 
What's on the menu? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> now that we're past my birthday, we're in September. Post birthday. It, oh, did you say post birthday? Post birthday. Oh, wow. I'm hearing things. Yeah. Um, this time always reminds me of just back to school. And I know that we haven't been in school in a really long so time. Back to school foods? Is that That's what right. you're about to tell us? That's correct. Wow. Because it got me thinking. I didn't that was a thing. I told you, it piqued my curiosity. <laughs> and see, Matt, you only told me and Chris and we shit on it an yeah. hour ago. Now Matt, Dawson and Caitlin are doing it live. Matt, but here's Matt, what I'm saying. I asked Matt before the show, I said, Matt, what, what is your, uh, your topic? Because wow. maybe I'll get the gears turning a little bit. And Matt just goes back to school food. And Gary and I had a very similar reaction to what Dawson and Kaylin just did, and Matt looks at us and goes, this is why I don't tell you before. <laughs> Save it for air, Didn't guys. even matter. <laughs> Chez Fondelay is about food experiences. We've talked about this. And there was no singular food experience that I had more often than cafeteria food. And just like being in cafeteria, lunchtime, I wanted to hear about everybody's experiences because you got the table dynamics where everybody's sitting there. Sometimes you pack a lunch. Sometimes you get to buy lunch. I don't know about you guys, but if you had to bring your own lunch, not nearly as cool as if you could buy lunch. Yeah. No? No one else? No, you're, right. you're totally right. I, uh, for me, it was uh, bagel sandwiches in the morning. Our cafeteria had <coughs> – uh, they, were, they were wrapped in foil, and it was just a bagel, eggs, cheese. That sounds good. It's pretty solid. Delicious. Yeah. It, it, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. And if I and if I had enough money, I would be so excited going to school to like to buy one of those. Yeah, things. it was it was always a treat. And there were kids who who uh, who had them every morning. It was kind of their signature. You'd always see like the same kids with the same with the same bagel, bagel sandwiches. sandwiches. Yeah. See, I wish I had a, a cafeteria that I would salivate thinking back on <laughs> because my memory was the like. Burgers that were basically wrapped in plastic, like yeah. sitting in cardboard. So it's basically like fogged over plastic and just the most disgusting, you know, thin freezer burned uh, burger patty, patty with yeah. a slice of American cheese on it. Or maybe they had like French bread pizza again in, in French, a fogged over plastic bag. French bread pizza, totally. Yep. I, I, t- I remember, I loved French bread pizza in middle school. I was also going way back to the elementary school days with the milk carton, which can we just talk about why is that so difficult to open? It still is to this oh, day. Oh, yeah. You just get One of the stuck. most common forms of uh, cafeteria food is the little tiny milk carton, and nobody knows how to open them properly. You crack it open, and then it's really that pull part the where you, where you have to pull the lip out. It always fails. It always fails, and then you go, okay. I do the two. other side. <laughs> yeah, to turn it around, and then you can't do it there. And now your carton just just looks weird because both sides are just demolished. Yep, that's when you do the little the diamond pull, and then you just open it up like a flower, and then you just drink <laughs> out of a fucking box that you're lucky <laughs> if you don't spill on yourself. Will you guys still drink milk today? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I, don't, but I just I learned will. the other day that Chris is grossed out by the idea of <laughs> just drinking milk. Joy so is my wife. Joy thinks it's disgusting. Yeah, so is my wife. I love it. Wait, Hol- didn't good Chris cold whole milk try Delicious. someone's breast milk? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that was at a wedding. At a, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Chris, Chris was sitting over so there. That's cool. For those watching on YouTube, Chris right. was hoping no one was going to remember that because he was devastated when I just remembered that detail. <laughs> yeah, that Very was at true. a wedding. Uh, no, well, I, I will correct you. Wedding reception. My mistake. It was a wedding reception. I asked to try milk and then decided against it. Oh, yeah, that's right, because your mm. then-girlfriend, now-wife, chastised you for it, Didn't right? chastise me, but thought, this is not a good idea. Mm. And and I agreed after... Uh, it's good after she the said, hey, Chris, you got a minute? <laughs> Perfect adjective. Come here, buddy. Uh, look, look I, <laughs> I was just... I was feeling adventurous. I She, she already pumped it. It was already it was already in the bottle. I wasn't asking her <laughs> if I could take not, a hit off can her tape. Can we not rehash this, please? Come on, guys! I'm not no. an animal. No, it's already on tape for any any and all interested parties. Go she fucking find it on it. your own. I'm not I'm not sitting through this conversation. Chris over here trying to justify himself is the greatest thing ever. I still don't. I really I, okay. So wait, back to cafeteria. So back to school food. <laughs> Um, Which is now a thing, apparently. Sure, why not? Why can't it be? Mm-hmm. What were the uh, the table dynamics for you guys? And I also want to know, did you guys sit in an indoor or an outdoor cafeteria? Because for me, I would always see indoor cafeterias on TV shows, 
but mm-hmm. because I live in Southern California, maybe you guys all have the same experience I did. We never had an indoor cafeteria. You'd only eat indoors if it was like a rainy day. We had an outdoor campus. Like it wasn't yeah, even – our lockers were outside. Okay, yeah, like when I would watch too. TV, you wouldn't see – all right, yeah, Dawson, Kalen, indoor we didn't cafeteria. Have any form of cafeteria? At Are you went to one of those hippie schools? They're just on the in elementary grazing school. Off the just land. bring your own food, and then in high school, yeah, I guess they would bring out kind of some sandwiches sometimes. But most people just walk down the street to Taco Bell nice. or Burger Place. Nice. And every once in a while, we had like an In-N-Out truck. There you go, Dawson, mm. indoor awesome. cafeteria. Uh, well, I was um, raised by no frills parents. So I was a pack of lunch kid. Right. Really didn't spend any time in the cafeteria. So you weren't allowed in the the cafeteria? In the parking lot. I see. Eating on other parts of campus. Yeah. I get it. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I brought my lunch a lot, but every once in a while. And I was vegan. Oh, gross. So my. My, uh, I my, forgot to bring my lunch more times than I brought a lunch. I would usually actually just starve yeah. at school. So I brought, I brought no food and had no money. Yeah. Sometimes the lunch lady would take pity on me. Oh, I, I, was oh. Not, I wasn't vegan yet. I was vegetarian. But I, my vegan friends, this was their meal. It was Sprite and a bag of pretzels every day. And now I think about it. I'm like, that is the That's worst terrible. thing you could eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, was their, that was their meal. Wow. You know? But yeah, I was I was totally cool with the bagel sandwiches and the uh, French bread pizza. Bagel sandwich sounds good, and that's something you wrap that in foil. It's still warm. You get at it. Oh man, yeah, oh, yeah. nice. Like you, you, even grabbing it from the outside, it was hot. Yeah, it was yeah, hot yeah, to yeah. touch. Yeah. Ooh, bagel sandwiches. The the being on campus was a big part of, like I said, like elementary school, middle school, and most of high school. But at my high school, juniors and seniors had an off campus pass, mm-hmm. that's and the same here. during the like forty five minute lunch break. You could really push your luck and try to haul ass to one of the fast food places, or there was a it. local pizza place. Oh, we tried so many times, and you'd inevitably be late too. You'd be last eating, you'd be eating your lunch in your next class. Yeah, like you don't, you can't eat during lunch because the, the travel, the cooking. Well, all yeah, that. but you guys went to high school in Southern California, right? Yeah, yeah, that's you got traffic to deal with. Yeah, yeah. When we had off campus, uh, privileges. Yeah, but. If, there it wasn't Mexican visible. places in Con- there's this one Mexican place in Concord that's badass and I can't think of it. It's on Monument Boulevard for anybody who knows. But that's where we would go. We got plenty of time, dude. Well, Chris and Matt can correct me if I'm wrong, but what my experience with <laughs> off campus lunch was in terms of traffic was not what you think of when you think of Southern California. It was the fact that there were two hundred and seventy five kids who all got to leave the same parking lot at the same time yeah. trying to go to the same four restaurants. A funnel. So right. they're all fighting each other right. on these roads to get to these restaurants and be in the first ten percent of kids to get there so they could hopefully get their food in time and get back. So it's yeah. not freeway traffic or something like that. It's right. the fact that there's so many people trying to go to the same five places all oh, yeah. at the same time. I, I knew one kid. exit for the parking lot. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was a two lane thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. And the assholes with trucks would just go over the curb. And then that, that <laughs> oh, was... that did happen in my school too. Oh, yeah. You guys and, know those high schoolers, they're rude drivers. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's a kid who I knew who I think uh, he didn't have a fourth period. Uh, for some reason, he got out of fourth period. So he got out early and he would go to In N Out and just buy a shit ton of burgers and then come back and just sell them to kids. Smart. Oh my yeah. God. What's I he doing now? Yeah. God. I want to meet that guy now. He's in prison. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He's got a good hustle, though. Yeah. Probably. And, and he, yeah. he works the window in and out. <laughs> <laughs> now he's selling them for real. That's right. <laughs> Actually, I will conclude with my own In N Out. Uh, story, which is related to all of this. One of my lasting high school memories was I was taking a chemistry class, and I, I was a very good student. I had A's and B's most of the time. And my chemistry class, I was doing really good in, and for whatever reason, I did not do great on the final. And it pulled my grade to like an 89, so it was going to be a B instead of an A. And I asked the teacher, I said, look, I really want an A in this class. I feel like I've been participating and I know I didn't do great on the final, but you know, I don't know what, how was I smooth talked him. And he said to me, if you go to in and out, you get me a strawberry milkshake, nice. wow. I will give you an A. And I <laughs> fucking tore out of there so fast. And I did. And I got the A and that's what's on the menu. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. How do you guys feel about eating puss? You guys like it? <laughs> <laughs> I asked that to the chemistry teacher afterward, and he I've failed a, me. I have a very, very similar story of, of uh, just like that. Maybe I'll talk about it on the Patreon. 
Um, but that'll do it for Water Cool. Let's get our plugs in. Let's start off with Kalen. Where can we go for you? Don't worry about me. All right. Great review, by the way, today. Yeah, nice job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gary Smith, what about you? YouTube.com slash Days of Thunder. Uh, and chunknibbles.com use code wolf wolf yeah and uh and uh for the days of thunder i wasn't in the most recent episode because i was in nashville but i in the episode before that i played a song an original song and i just want to plug that in because i had a lot of fun doing it it, it was, was great. great it was, it was fucking please, hilarious dynamite nice all right and uh, by original song it's not like a song that i wrote and i really it was about the show and it, it, it's jokey so I think yeah but it's it. very well done and if you watch it on youtube at youtube.com slash dave's of thunder chris even put up a virtual background so it looked like he was in a club <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome all right matt where can we go for you well you can follow me on twitter at matt fondelier of course we all want you to sign up for our <laughs> patreon show we're having a lot of fun and we're going to do our patreon show in R- approximately 10 minutes after yeah. we wrap this Ooh, more white claws. Yeah, it's gonna, gonna be, be a four claw day. Eh? Gonna be oh, a time. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. get it's gonna get Ooh, nice and fun. Ugly. Are you nice? Where yeah. do you subscribe to that, Matt? Patreon.com slash water cooler. So clean. So so clean. So join us, won't you? I agree. I love I love the Patreon. We got a lot of good comments, which I'll read in the Patreon show too. Uh, Dawson, where could we go for you? I got a new audio book out. It Ooh. just got released uh, at least on Audible. Uh, yesterday, um, it's called The Light by Buck Storm, and it's uh, a fictional story based on historical fact that takes place in the year 1 AD, and, huh. uh, or I guess zero, yeah, one, and uh, all the characters surrounding Jesus' crucifixion are all in it, and... Um, it, it's it it goes. It's a fictional story about Joseph of Arimathea and how you know, based on fact, they tried to strip him of everything um, because he gave his his tomb to Jesus. And it's not you know, it's 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 religiony, but it's fucking yeah, good. I've met Buck. Buck Buck Storm yeah, writes some really fucking compelling books. And as far as uh, my narration work. Uh, this is the best narrated audiobook I've ever produced. Well, I know who's going to be this really one. Ex- it's you. You will feel it. Like I got chills when I was fucking mastering it. Well, I'll take that, Adam Carolla. Like, yeah, eat my dick, <laughs> my <hair>, I guess. <clears throat> well, uh, well, I just get better every time. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> the next one will be better than the last one. But uh, this, it's so good, and it's available on Audible. Again, it's called The Light. The author is Buck Storm. And um, if you have an Audible account, uh, please pick it up. Thank you. All right. And my, I will plug the Facebook group again. And you know who's going to be really excited about that audiobook is listener Carrie Lindsay, who on the Facebook group – I forgot to read this one because I put it in the wrong uh, section of my paper. But she wrote on the Facebook group, just have to say that I'm a huge fan of this podcast, best part of my week. Ooh, and I always ooh, smile ooh. at respect all women. Ooh. You're a class act, gentlemen. Side Thank note. You. Dawson has the sexiest radio voice I have ever heard in my entire life. Swoon. I haven't listened to any of the audiobooks he's recorded, but I'd like to. Can anyone direct me to a list of what he's got out there? And in the comments, everybody put his website, but why don't you just hit, hit us one more time? Uh, most of them are up at DawsonAudiobooks.com, but you can go to DawsAngeles.com and everything is there. And thank you. Yeah. And, um, Her name's Carrie. Carrie. Oh, he said your name, Carrie. Uh, All right. And uh, once again, that's facebook.com slash group slash Bobo Boy Army Worldwide LLC. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we got to get we gotta get a bit.ly. I, <laughs> <laughs> Tech talk. I love it. I, I do too. love it. I do too. Um, all right. Well, thanks again to everybody who uh, was talking about the show contributes and in um, and, and the Facebook group, Twitter, all that. We love we love that everyone gets involved. It's, this show is so fun for us to do. We'll be back in uh, a few minutes with the Patreon episode. <laughs> so, once again, thanks for listening. We'll see you in a little bit. Bye. <laughs>